Framer or Webflow? Which one should you choose? If you're a designer and you want to make pixel perfect websites, then I'm going to be straight up and just give you the pros and cons of both. I personally use both for client work and personal projects. So I'm gonna share the best parts of both. So I'm gonna be covering a few different categories. So we cover majority of the key stuff you need to make a decision. Um, we're gonna be going through a UI, the resources, SEO, pricing, and a few other things, integrations and collaborations. I'll try and make it as practical as possible, but let's kick it off with the user interface. So here is the Webflow interface. You've got your layers or your navigator on the left-hand side. So I can click on each individual layer and it will show me all the elements like the div blocks and the text and buttons and anything I have on the left-hand side. You've got your breakpoints up the top as well. So I've got my desktop breakpoints, um, the iPad, tablet, and also the phone breakpoints as well for the website. On the right hand side, you've got the um, share buttons, the publish button on the top right, and then you've got your CSS styles. So this is how you customize the look and feel of your text, your borders, your backgrounds, your effects, and then you've got interactions as well in the interaction menu. And this is the main interface. You've also got um, your menus on the left hand side. So you've got elements, the pages, components as well, colors, um, styles, images, CMS, and a few other things there. So whereas in Framer, you can see this is the user interface. It's a lot more user-friendly. It's easy to look at everything as a glance. There's a lot of like white space and you can see the menus on the side are a bit more easy to look at. You've got layout, effects, styles, breakpoints um, up the top. You can click on the name of the website. You've also got the breakpoint here. I can add a breakpoint, uh, which is super cool. So if I want to add phone, I can add the phone and then I'll have to update that. Um, it's got an infinite canvas, which I think is a really, um, which is really cool. So it feels like Figma. It's like you're in Figma and I can zoom in. I can, um, you know, just duplicate as many pages as I want, drag things around. It's super flexible. You've got your page on the left, which is pretty easy to navigate through. All right, you've also got your layer, so you can see everything's pretty clear. You can see your stacks, components with cl clearly colored and labeled items. Um, and then you've got your assets. So you've got components, your styles. Um, you've also got code as well. And then you've got the menus on the top left. So you've got the um, site uh, menu and dashboard. You've got, in you've got the inserts, you've got um, components and elements you can add. You've got layouts, frames, grids. Um, text, CMS, buttons, and also um, you've got actions there as well. Um, so overall, uh, I feel like Webflow feels a bit overwhelming. Framer is a bit more easy on the eyes and easy to get into. Uh, there's not much of a learning curve here. Now, next we've got resources. Now, Framer has only transitioned or pivoted to a well building tool um, about three years ago. So they've only started to get on the map and compete with Webflow. Um, so they have a little bit less resources. Um, they do have Framer University, which is cool. So you can join the wait list here, um, but they've got heaps of different tutorials. Um, it's gonna to basically tell you, train you in everything you need to learn. There's heaps of tutorials on YouTube as well that I found. Um, a lot of people are creating tutorials now. Um, you can see you've got a whole bunch of tutorials. So if I want to click on this one, um, you can see you can watch the video. And there you have it. So he's teaching everything and yeah, it's really great. So, um, so one point for Framer there. If you go on Webflow, Webflow has a univer Webflow University and I've personally gone through it and I'd say it's top tier quality. Um, you know, th this comedic value when they're talking and the video editing is funny and, it and it's just easy to learn. It's bite-sized um, videos so you can see all the courses. Um, the design is great. Um, it's really easy just to go through here. Um, as you can see, if you, whatever you want to learn, if I click on here, it has all the modules, all the lessons. And it takes you through all that. So I'd say both of them uh, will have pretty similar resources. Webflow will probably have more on the forums and Reddit and YouTube. Um, but Framer is starting to build their um, library up. So I think it's, yeah, both, um, both are pretty good. Next, we're going to talk about interactions. Now, when it comes to Webflow, I can click on the interaction bar and you can do a whole bunch of things. You can do mouse clicks, mouse hovers. You can do scroll animations. Um, you can do sticky animations as well. Um, nav bar and drop down menu opens and closes. Page triggers as well when you um, 
when you're hitting an object or a certain part of the page. Um, the only thing I don't like is that it's a bit tricky to, you know, add what you want on Webflow. If you just do the basic presets, it's fine. But when you start trying to do advanced stuff, it's a bit finicky. Um, and you've got sort of this um, timed. So if I want to start a custom animation, for example, and I want to edit that, they've got this weird um, action timeline thing that you'd have to move around and you have to select the state and, um, you know, play around with the easing and stuff. And so if you're not really an animator and uh, a developer, this might be a little bit tricky. Compare it to Framer, it's really easy to um, add some animation in there. So for example, if I click on the text and I go on the right side, you can see I've got effects there and I can easily add something. So if I want to do like a hover or a P, um, maybe I want to, you know, add a text animation, I can click on that and I can just literally press play and you can see it just adds the animation like that. There's not much to it. Um, it's pretty simple to use um, as you can see. So maybe for this section, I want to add another effect. Maybe we want to do um, scroll animation, um, layer in view and so press play there. We scroll through and it just fades in. So it's really easy to add effects. You can also stack effects on Framer. Um, so I feel like it's a for beginners in Framer, it's a bit it's better because it's just a bit easier to add effects. Whereas Webflow, you got to learn how to use this um, this interaction panel and stuff, and it might take a little bit longer. Next, let's talk about CMS features. Now on Webflow, they have a more robust CMS collection. You can actually add more fields and inputs, whereas Framer doesn't have as as much. Um, for example. If I click add new collection in the CMS, you click this little button down here, I can click create new collection and they've got preset templates. So I can add blog posts, projects, categories, events. Uh, you can add heaps of stuff. So if I want to do blog posts, you can see you'll add all the collection data and fields. Um, so it adds that. I can see the preview on the right side. So the name, the slug, the body, the rich text as well. Um, I can actually customize these fields pretty easily. Just select it and click save. And you can also add fields as well. So Webflow has heaps of different field types, links, video links, email, phone number, date, color and stuff. Whereas Frame is a bit more limited. So it's pretty robust in um, Webflow. And when you want to edit, so here's an example of a blog um, on my, on a client site. You can see all the content is in here. All you gotta do is like literally copy and paste um, the content. It's really easy to, you know, click. You can replace images. You just click replace or delete. Um, you can see all the data and if you're just going to edit on the front end, so if I click edit from the client end, it's pretty easy to, um, if you just go to the blog site, you know, I can come in here and edit the text live. It's pretty simple to come in here and edit for the client. So I like that about Webflow. Um, it's a bit better. Now when it comes to Framer, it is easy to add a collection as well. You can click add collection, add new items. Um, obviously it looks a little bit different. Here are the blogs. Um, I like how it's, this is a bit more simple and bigger in your face to read. Um, you know, this, uh, the previewer. So you've got image, you've got content here. You can add links, bold. Um, you know, you can add images and videos and stuff. Um, so you do have some control. You can even add a uh, code, uh, code, which is, or JSX. Uh, you can add code, which is cool. Um, but if we say we want to go to the top and we've got to click edit fields, they've only got these. They've got, you know, title, you got slug, date, image, and content. Um, click plus. So these are all the options here. So um, you got plain text, links, image, um, date, file, option. The, I don't think they have video here. Um, so they're a bit lacking a little bit, but it's pretty similar in terms of like the functionality. Um, but yeah, but let's talk about SEO and performance. So like on Webflow, if you go to the back end, you've got these advanced publish options. So you can actually minimize the file size on a site. So you can actually enable SSL. You got uh, Minify, CSS, JS, HTML. So all the backend code is going to compress it a little bit. And Webflow has been around for longer. So um, their code is a lot more leaner um, and you're able to make sites um, yeah, run faster. Another cool thing about Webflow as well is that they've got the assets panel. So if I go to the assets, as you can see here, um, I can select everything and I can compress it. So you can see it's got this compress button. It will only compress JPEGs and PNGs or WebP. So Framer doesn't have that, but Webflow, it just it will compress. So it will save you time, you know, going to Photoshop, resizing and exporting and stuff. So 
Um, I love this feature from Webflow. It's really good. And if I want to edit SEO for a home for any page, I just click on the little cog here. It will open up the home settings, and I love how I can just easily come in here, change the SEO. I can look at the Google preview of the search result. Love that. Um, and also, I can see the open graph settings. So when you share it on social media, you've got a lot more um, options here. You can insert custom code. Um, site search settings, you can change the links. Basically, you have full control of the SEO. It's a lot better. Uh, if we go to Framer, you can see I can click on settings. So if I go to a page, click the three dots and click on settings, it will take me to the homepage settings. So it's a, li a little bit more leaner when it comes to SEO. You've got the title and the slug, page description. I can see the preview of what it lo looked like. Um, you've got the page images. So when you share the image on social media when you share your website on social media you've also got custom code as well so pretty similar to webflow as well i heard framers code is not as good as webflow so um, in terms of speed um, i don't know i could be wrong i haven't researched too deep into it you've got analytics as well similar um, to webflow as well so you know you can look at who's visiting the website um, you've got staging redirects domains in general um, so there's no options to like minify or anything like that. So I think overall, um, Webflow has got a bit more features when it comes to SEO. All right, so let's talk about collaboration. In Webflow, you can invite people to your dashboard or to your workspace. So you can see I've got a few clients, they invite me to their workspace, which is really easy to do. If I go to my own workspace um, on the back end, you can click on team. Um, and you can invite a commenter so someone can comment add comments to the website Maybe you're getting feedback from a client. That's really cool I can also invite a guest I just put their email and I can make them an admin or they can design and they can publish and I just select the site and It's really easy to add It's pretty straightforward in frame go to the top right corner click invite add someone's email very similar to figma I can easily add a collaborator so just add an email give them full access to whatever I want and then click send and then just accept it and it'll pop up on their workspace and they'll have a link there. You can also copy the project link like this um, to the website and it will show them um, the link here. Um, Webflow has a similar thing as well. I gotta go to the top corner, click share and I can share a read only link. link. I can also click invite as well, collaborate with your team and it'll take me to that back end section I showed you before. As you can see, site access. Um, if you want to add an editor, you have to upgrade though, which is annoying. Um, but let me just paste the Webflow preview link. So both sites have really easy to collaborate and share. It's not difficult. I think they're both um, both good there. Now let's talk about plugins. Now Framer doesn't have plugins yet. It's coming later on this year in 2024, but Webflow has a lot more plugins. So if I just go to, um, so you can see they announced it uh, back in March, Framer plugins, you have to get on the wait list. Um, they will be adding um, some stuff to, soon. There are apps like Reloom and uh, Tilebit and stuff where you can copy components and pre-made layouts and it copies the HTML and, and you can paste it in, um, which is super easy, for example. So it's not necessarily a plugin, but it's just, it's just a component library. So for example, once that's done, I can literally go into Framer and let me just go to my other page real quick. I can press Control V and it will paste the header like that, as you can see. And then I can, uh, I'll just choose this image here. But now, boom, there you go, really easy to do. And I can also copy to Webflow as well. So they have the same functionality when it comes to component libraries. Um, I'll just quickly paste it here. There you go, paste it in. So they're both for that same functionality, which I love. Um, uh, but Webflow does take the cake for this. They do have um, integrations and more plugins and it's better for uh, e-commerce as well. If I go down to apps, you can see I've got all these apps. You've got, you know, Reloom, Site Builder, HubSpot, FinSuite. Um, you know, you can plug in uh, Unsplash, Make, Boosters, SVG Import. You've got Lottie File connected. Um, you've got plugins like Fluid SEO, you know, Better Shadows, all this stuff and you can search for um, you can search for plugins if I want to do icons here. So Webflow has the upper hand um, over Framer for that, but Framer will most likely get a lot of the similar plugins anyway. Um, so, so Webflow wins that for now. Now lastly, let's talk about pricing, right? So let's double check the pricing. 
So the good thing about Frame Art, they are a bit cheaper than Webflow. You can see they've got a mini plan where Webflow doesn't have any mini plan. You can pay, for me, it's eight bucks a month Australian dollars. Um, if I'm just doing like a portfolio site or a simple landing page, really cheap. And then you've got uh, around 18 bucks um, for a normal site. This is for annual discount, but if you go monthly, um, so if you don't do annual, you do monthly, you can see the prices just change a little bit. And then if for big marketing sites, 45 bucks. So it, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, you've got the workspace as well. So workspaces, you don't need to pay unless you've got a big team and you need multiple editors. Um, if you're a solo preneur, solo business, you don't need to pay for workspace. It will most likely be free. As you can see, free forever. Um, you can collaborate on free sites for tiny teams, as you can see. Um, so you just want to mainly pay attention to site pricing. And then you can see what you get, the bandwidth, the visitors. Um, there's only 5 MB max upload size. So if you have large images, it's going to not allow you to do it. So you have to pay for a plan, um, a bigger plan, which... Uh, kind of sucks. So the pro plan gives you 20 megabytes. I think five megabytes might be a little bit too small um, Unless you can press your images before you upload so that's probably not the best when it comes to framer um, You got SSL certificate. You got form submissions. So it's similar to Webflow um, Publishing um, CMS items 1000 is plenty <clears throat> And so if we look at Webflow as well, so you've got site plans so monthly, you can see it's a bit more. So it's $18 instead of 15 and 29 instead of 25. So you, it's a bit more, a um, couple of dollars more. And you can see what you get. You get, you know, CMS items, uh, form submissions. Um, you get two free pages with Framer. Um, you get unlimited. There's no limit of free pages. So you can do as many hobby sites, free sites, which is way better um, than Webflow. It Webflow is pretty limited. Uh, then you got popular, you got CMS and business. So for big sites, you'd be doing the bigger one, but most likely you just need basic or CMS. Then if you click on e-commerce, there's different pricing for that, uh, which I think is you know a bit weird. You know, just makes it more complicated. Then you got the workspace plan. So if I click on that, say if you're a freelancer, it's free. You've only got one user and two two staging sites, which is I think is too low. And you can invite guests, so that's okay. But I think this is a bit low. Um, but if you upgrade to $16 a month, um, you can have 10 staging sites, three users. Um, I I'm on this plan, the freelancer plan, uh, not the agency. So I'm only limited to 10. So I've got to archive sites a lot um, to open, to make space. You've also got heaps of templates as well. So if you go to uh, the resources and go to templates, um, So Framer's got hundreds of templates. People are building new ones all the time. They look really great. Webflow has hundreds of templates as well. So they both have templates. Um, you can customize fonts, layouts, um, do components. But I think they both have their strengths and weaknesses. Framer is really great to get websites up really fast. I love the user interface. It feels like a design tool. You can literally just design in there. And like the infinite canvas, um, it's easy to add effects. I also love their templates as well. It's really easy to just jump in there, edit components, change styles around. Um, but on the other hand, if you want to do big sites, big marketing sites for bigger companies, I think uh, Webflow um, is better for that because you can customize things, add more code, um, and it's got more integrations for now. But Framer will be um, catching up and expanding upon their, you know, their library, their, their integrations, and everything over time. So I think they're both great tools. You just got, it just depends on your use case and your situation. What, what, you know, what, is it a small client? Is it a big client? Um, and what are the functionalities that you need um, for the website? So yeah, I hope that helps you make a decision on what you want to use. You can use both. I, you know, it's okay to use both. I think it's always good to be learning new skills. And even if it's a hard learning curve, it's just good to understand development, understand, you know, HTML and CSS, understand how the web is built because um, websites are all built on that. And so it's just better to get the understanding. So thanks so much for watching. If you do actually want to try out Framer, I do have a coupon code. Just use it. Just type in Jeremy in the checkout and you get 25% off your first three months. And if you do want to see me add commercial AI images to a website design, you can check out this video right here.